Okay, so today we're going to be doing image manipulation and we're going to be using a package called Sharp. It's quite similar to something like GIMP and uh, GIMP I've done videos about earlier. So if you don't know what it is, I will leave the links to those videos linked down below and you can go ahead and watch those. Now, I will say that this package is faster than GIMP, but there's a little less features. You know, if the feature is here and um, then yeah, I, I would probably go with this one instead of GIMP. But anyways, let's get into the code. So what I have right here is two require statements one to fs and fs is not required but we are going to be using it for one of the examples and then we have the shop library and then we have an asynchronous function here with just a basic try catch now this library both has callbacks and promises i like working with promises so that is why we're working with promises and the first things i want to go ahead and show you here is how to load and save files now you can go ahead and load a file like this here this will load the file and this here will go ahead and convert the file to a PNG. And this will go ahead and save the file as a PNG. Now you can do all these different formats here and you just wanna change this name here. And of course the file extension, and then you will be able to save it as a different format. And when it's done, it will go ahead and return the info, which will be the information about how it saved the file and if it doesn't succeed, then we'll go ahead and throw an error. But like I said before, you can also go ahead and save this with FS. So you just go ahead and do the same function. And this can be any of the functions I showed you before. And then to buffer instead, this will go ahead and convert the image to a buffer. And then you can go ahead and save this with FS. Or you could go ahead and stream it with express or whatever you want to do with that buffer. Now, if you want to go ahead and get some metadata then you can go ahead and call the metadata function on here and we can actually go ahead and show you this by running the code here and you can see that we get these different things we get the format the width the height the space the channels and we can go ahead and see all these different parameters okay so let's actually do some image manipulation so the first thing we're going to do here is convert an image to a grayscale so this will go ahead and take this image and convert it to a grayscale then to a png and then output it as a file called edited-shapes. And our files are over here. The original image looks like this. And if we go ahead and run this here, then you can see that we'll go ahead and get this edited-shapes and it's a grayscale. We can also go ahead and run resize and you can go ahead and see you provide the different parameters here and then you go ahead and just run it and it's very simple and this will resize the image and there's some different parameters and I won't go into them in this video but I will go ahead and provide you the documentation which is absolutely amazing and there's a lot of information and there's examples and stuff like that and you can go ahead and read that because that's how I've learned all this information here I think I've spent about 25 minutes on researching this library it is pretty simple to get started with so I will go ahead and include those down below now the next command here is threshold and it's pretty difficult to explain how it works. You can go ahead and read this text here and essentially converts every pixel value that's greater or equal to the threshold value to 255. Otherwise it will be set to zero. That doesn't really make any sense up in my head, but when you go ahead and run it, it actually does make sense. And you can see that this converts the image to black and white. And this would be good for something like edge detection. You can see, we can see all of the edges. Now the next command here, I have no idea what actually does, but it looks really cool. I have no idea what this is and this, but it, it works and it looks pretty cool. So let's go ahead and run this. And you can see we get like this image here. It looks really cool. Now the next thing here is changing the hue, saturation and brightness. So let's go ahead and set the hue here. And you can see that this changes the hue. And we can, of course, add saturation and brightness to this as well. And this will go ahead and change the saturation and brightness on top of the hue. Now, the next command we're going to take a look at here is blur. Now, blur just works by default. Just go ahead and run blur. It doesn't blur the image a whole lot. So you can go ahead and see here. It's not blurred a whole lot. But if you go ahead and provide a value in here, then it actually runs a Gaussian blur which will go ahead and blur the image. And you can go up from between 0 0.3 to 1000. Now, if you do anything higher than like 500 or 200, 300, 
like it just becomes one color so i don't know why it goes all the way up to a thousand and also you higher you go you longer it takes so let's go ahead and take a look at this and you can see that this is quite blurred and you know for most cases you probably wouldn't even go as high as 20. and you can of course also go ahead and make your own images so this makes an image that is 920 by 1080 which four color channels and then it sets the background to red with an alpha value of 0 0.5 and if we go ahead and run this you can see we get this red box here and you can see there's a lot of small squares here. I don't know if you can see it, but that is Visual Studio just showing that it's transparent. So that has been everything for today. I hope you learned something and I hope that you can take something away from this video. So if you like this video, hit the thumbs up button and the subscribe button. If you want to see more of my videos, I have included two videos right here. And hopefully I see you in the next one.